Sierra Leone, the Lion Mountain as the first explorers called it, stands expectant as the Royal Yacht Britannia sails up the estuary to Freetown. Sierra Leone is an independent member of the Commonwealth and Britannia brings Queen Elizabeth II, their own queen and head of the Commonwealth. The guns of the Royal Sierra Leone Regiment thundered out a salute. Before Britannia had dropped anchor, Freetown's famous Bullen boats sailed out in force to give the traditional welcome of this seagoing people to their sovereign. All Freetown, including members of the government and the Governor General, thronged the waterfront to greet their royal guests. The Prime Minister, Sir Milton Margai, greeted the Queen and Duke on board Britannia. As they stepped ashore, he welcomed them again to Sierra Leone, and formal presentations began. Then, with her personal ensign as Queen of Sierra Leone, flying for the first time from her car, Her Majesty, with the Duke of Edinburgh, drove through the clamorous streets of the capital to Fort Thornton, the Governor-General's residence, where she was to stay during her visit. The Mayor of Freetown received the royal visitors at a brilliant reception in Victoria Park, where they met members of the City Council, the Diplomatic Corps, and leading citizens of the capital. The Mayor presented Her Majesty with a golden key, which, she told him, had unlocked the hearts of the people of Freetown and would, in the future, unlock... military parade, where she inspected the 1st Battalion, the Royal Sierra Leone Regiment. She also presented new colours to the battalion. May abide in thy peace and obedience to thy will. Amen. The supply of fresh water to Freetown and its adjacent regions has always been a grave problem. That problem is now near to solution. The Duke of Edinburgh visited the Gooma Valley, where a great dam is being built, financed mainly by the Sierra Leone government and the Colonial Development Corporation. Due to be completed in 1965, it will meet all the freshwater needs of the capital and its neighbourhood. On Sunday, the Queen and Duke, accompanied by the Prime Minister, attended divine service at St George's Cathedral in Freetown, where they were welcomed by the Bishop of Sierra Leone.
But Freetown is not the whole of Sierra Leone. So the Queen and Duke with the Prime Minister travel to Bow, the capital of the southern province. Bow Hospital is the oldest in the provinces of Sierra Leone and serves a population of 400,000 in the Bow district, as well as the whole of the southern provinces. The pleasure of the royal visit can be seen among both patients and staff. Bow Government Secondary School, founded in 1905, is one of the oldest in West Africa. Its 360 boys devised a most interesting and original welcome for their queen, an hour-by-hour -hour demonstration of a day in the life of a Bow schoolboy. Many members of the government and of the civil service are among the school's former pupils. Life at Bow is evidently not all work. This Wari game seemed to fascinate the visitors. And at last, lights out and the end of a busy day. From the academic quiet to the pomp of a royal derba. For this occasion, the southern province's paramount chiefs discarded modern forms of transport. Born, as is their right, in hammocks, they file past the Queen, Duke, and Prime Minister Margai. <laughs> Groups all have their attendant devils, whose diabolical antics find a royal response. Paramount Chief was received by the Queen and presented with a commemorative medal. of each group are illustrating a village activity. These are the hunters. in the eastern province is celebrated for its agricultural show, started 12 years ago by the Sierra Leone Department of Agriculture.
This year, in honour of the royal visit, an entire model village has been laid out, so that their queen can see how some of her people of Sierra Leone live. All villages, everywhere, have their moments of relaxation. This is one of them. The object of this game is to flick your opponent's top off the map. Sierra Leone is not a rich country, but considerable increases in the output of diamonds have greatly helped the national economy. They have recently become Sierra Leone's biggest single export. Alluvial diamond diggings such as these at Hanga are leased to private individuals who sell all their stones to a government agency. Her Majesty was obviously fascinated by the processes that yield these exquisite gems. But diamonds are not the only source of revenue. Here, at Marempa, the royal visitors saw Sierra Leone's great iron ore workings. The most modern equipment enables this vital mineral to be excavated and dispatched by diesel-electric train to ocean-going ships at the port of Papel. This visit provided yet another opportunity for Her Majesty to meet more of her people of Sierra Leone. These great earth-moving machines yearly excavate two million tons of high-grade iron ore. From Marempa to Port Loco in the northern province, Paramount Chiefs are game gather to meet their sovereign, while the dancers of many societies vied with each other to do her honor. Back in the capital, at Freetown, the Queen and Duke attended what was perhaps one of the most delightful of their many public engagements, a children's rally and citizen's parade.
obvious enthusiasm with which these young people greeted their queen must surely have warmed her heart. The history of the University College of Sierra Leone, Fora Bay, goes back to 1827. Students from all over West Africa come to study at this famous college, which is closely associated with Durham University. The Queen is visitor of the college, and now she comes in person to present degrees accompanied by her husband and the Prime Minister. The University College houses 380 students, of which one-third are women. When the candidates are assembled before the Queen, her Majesty formally confers on them their degrees and diplomas. At a state banquet, the Queen, addressing especially the young people of Sierra Leone, paid this moving tribute to their Prime Minister. Sierra Leone can count herself truly fortunate that while gaining her independence, she has found a leader wise, experienced and devoted to her people. To you, Prime Minister, more than to any other single person, goes the credit for quickening the political consciousness of Sierra Leone and of uniting her people. Yours is a record of selfless service and singular achievement, which will always stand as an inspiration to your country. The following day, with age-old ceremonial, which emphasized the links between Parliament at Westminster and this vigorous new member of the Commonwealth, Her Majesty visited the House of Representatives when she received a loyal address. A memorable visit drew to a close with a garden party given by the Prime Minister at his official residence. As Britannia waits at the Queen Elizabeth, the second key, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh take their leave of this happy, friendly land. But first, Sir Milton Magai makes his farewell gifts. For the Queen, an example of the country's famous diamonds. Duke, a gift of a boa constrictor, which will soon be presented to the London Zoological Society, of which he is president. Goodbye, God bless you, and come back soon.